Hello! I'm going to read for you Jingle Bells by Nick Butterworth. Christmas time. A happy time, or so it should be. Why then, on Christmas Eve, did two small mice look so unhappy? It's that cat, grumbled Lottie to her brother Jack. He always spoils things. Ah oh, yes, the cat. He should have been wonderful for the mice, living in a cart shed on a farm. There were games to play, places to explore, and usually plenty to eat. The only problem was that cat. The mice had been hiding food for their Christmas dinner, but the cat had discovered their hiding place. He didn't particularly like grapes or cheese or cake, but still, he had eaten every bit and left the mice with nothing. That cat. Cheer up, said Jack. Look what I found. It was an old glove. Jack began to chew at it. We can't eat that, said Lottie. Jack went on chewing. Soon, he had gnawed off two of the glove's fingers. There, he said. Christmas stockings. One each. We can hang them up for Father Christmas. <gasps> Brilliant, said Lottie. I've never had a Christmas stocking. That night, as the mice snuggled down to sleep, they wondered what Father Christmas would bring them. Lottie had written their names on a note which she'd put next to the Christmas stockings so that Father Christmas would know who they were there for. Soon, Lottie began to snore and Jack began to dream. Dream the air was filled with the sound of sleigh bells. <gasps> Christmas morning. The day was fresh and bright as Lottie and Jack hurried excitingly to look at their Christmas stockings. They were empty. Nothing, said Jack sadly. Not even a knot. Lottie picked up the note, which she had written the night before. Look at this, she said underneath their names. Someone had written, not here, gone away for Christmas. Hmm, I know who wrote that, said Jack. They both knew. It's time we taught that cat a lesson, said Lottie. But what can we do, said Jack? He's so big and strong. Well, said Lottie, I think we should go and talk to Tom Chi. Tom Chi was a rat. Actually, his real name was Gavin, but he liked to be called Tom Chi. He wore glasses with no glass in them, and he wore clothes which he had borrowed from dolls in the farmhouse attic. He also borrowed furniture from a doll's house in the attic, which he had said made his own place look more homely. Lottie and Jack made their way through the snow towards the barn where Tom Chi lived. Suddenly, Jack spotted something shiny and golden. Oh, it's a bell, said Jack. No, 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 it's a sleigh bell, said Lottie. It must have fallen off Father Christmas's sleigh. Oh, it's lovely. Let's take it with us. We can show it to Tom Chi. When the mice reached the barn, they were quite out of breath, but there was still a difficult crime to make. At last, puffing and panting, they came to the door at the top of the barn. Before Jack could knock, the door opened. Good morning and a very merry Christmas to you, said the rat. The mice smiled and replied nervously. They then stepped inside. Tom Chi shut the door. Now, it's hard to exactly say what the mice and the rat had said to each other, but whatever it was, when the door opened again, all three were smiling. Thank you so much, said Lottie and Jack together. Tom Chi smiled. The pleasure is all mine, he said. Cats can be a terrible nuisance. Later, after a Christmas dinner of some borrowed fruit cake, which Tom Chi had given them, the mice could be seen wrapping up a parcel. Later still, they tried not to be seen, as they cautiously carried the parcel towards the farmhouse. Boxing Day. Mrs Mackey, the farmer's wife, swung her feet out of the bed and into her slippers. At the foot of the stairs, the cat brushed her legs. Oh, hello, Angus, she said. What's this? 
she picked up a small parcel and lay on the mat and she read the label. It's an extra present for you, Angus, she said to the cat. Angus watched as Mrs. Maggie opened the parcel. What could it be? It's a little bell, said Mrs. Mackey, on a pretty red ribbon. Before he could escape, Mrs. Maggie took a hold of Angus and tied the ribbon around his neck. The little bell tickled under his chin. There, she said, oh, you look lovely. Angus twisted his neck uncomfortably and the bell jingled again. He pulled a face and he poured at the bell. Don't you dare, said Mrs. Mackey. You keep it on. It was about tea time in the afternoon. Lottie and Jack were having great fun in the snow when suddenly they stopped and they listened. They could help the jingling of the little bell. Quick, quick, someone's coming, whispered Lottie. The mice ran to hide in the plant shed. As they peered out, they saw a very cross-looking Angus go stalking past. He looked from side to side and he shook his head. The little bell jingled merrily. Hmm, grunted Angus, and he stomped off, jingling as he went. The mice burst out into fits of giggles and Lottie began to sing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Now Angus can't sneak up on us, we can go out and play. They laughed and they laughed. It may not have been a very merry Christmas, said Jack, but it does look like being a very happy New Year. Well, Blockhouse, thank you very much for letting me read this fantastic story. All I need to say is have a wonderful and magical Christmas.